plague, pandemic. Surely words we can appreciate and understand the significance of a whole lot more now than we did pre-2020. And we're living it, one year in. And as we've all seen and have now experienced firsthand is, one thing that's hard to predict is people's behavior. In April 2020, an article on the Washington Post caught my eye, as some epidemiologists examined behavior from a very unexpected source to aid in their research. A virtual pandemic in World of Warcraft, known as the Corrupted Blood Incident. Blizzard's World of Warcraft, the most popular MMO of all time, its influence on the video game industry and pop culture as a whole is undeniable. I won't bore you with the details, who doesn't know World of Warcraft? World of Warcraft? Leaning tower of pizza boxes? The Corrupted Blood Incident takes us all the way back to 2005, when WoW was still relatively in its infancy. Oh my god, he just ran in. In September that year, Blizzard introduced a new 20-player raid instance in the Stranglehold Vale region named Zul Garub. Players who were able to reach the end of the raid were then faced with the end boss, Hakar the Soul Flayer. Pretty sick. One of Hakar's attacks inflicts the player with Corrupted Blood, a damage over time debuff that deals 200 damage every 2 seconds to the affected player. On top of that, Corrupted Blood will actually transmit to nearby players, spreading amongst the team. So one of the strategies during the boss fight to mitigate the spread of Corrupted Blood was to have groups of players work together in small packs and spread out. It was hard. Raid fights can be chaotic. Keep in mind, there's a 20 person raid, there's a lot going on. God damn it, Leroy. Now of course, Corrupted Blood was designed to only be in effect during the raid instance. So if you were to leave the area, the debuff would stop. So no problems, right? Wrong. The freaking pets. The Hunter class, of course, allows the taming of animals and other creatures to fight alongside the character as a companion. Hunters can summon and unsummon their pets freely in and out of combat. And of course, they too can be inflicted with corrupted blood. And whether you want to call it a glitch or a major design oversight, if you had a pet that had corrupted blood and then unsummoned it, if you were to leave the raid instance and summon your pet outside, it would still have corrupted blood. And that, of course, could be transmitted to other players. Again, outside of the raid instance. And typically, what's the first place a player would go after a raid? Almost always, one of the major cities, to sell off loot, etc. And these areas were a major hub, often filled with hundreds of players roaming around in one concentrated area. You can probably see where this is going. It's very common for hunter players to summon their pet companions in the city just to show them off or whatever, let them stretch their legs. And of course, this was the start of the Corrupted Blood Incident. September 13th, 2005, on the Archimon server, the debuff started rapidly spreading through players in these areas. And keep in mind, it dealt 200 damage every 2 seconds, something a high level, raid ready character can usually endure, as the debuff actually only lasted 10 seconds, but for low to even mid level characters, they started dropping like flies. Beginner characters would get killed off instantly. Now at first, this doesn't sound that bad, like, yeah, a lot of players would have their characters die, but the whole thing would probably burn itself out very quickly, right? Wrong. Another unexpected side effect was NPCs, non-playable characters. Cities were filled with more than just other players, but in-game characters as well that serve a purpose like blacksmiths, trainers, quest-relevant characters, and so on. These NPCs could also become carriers of corrupted blood, but they couldn't die from it. They were unaffected, but could still pass it on to other players. In studies, epidemiologists compared them to asymptomatic carriers, or a vector, something that spreads the disease like a mosquito or something. And before long, bodies of dead characters started piling up in the streets, with the main contaminated areas being the city's Iron Forge and Ogremar. It made the game basically unplayable, especially for lower level characters. Characters in the world's most popular online game are being wiped out by a plague that's so far proving unstoppable. Players had no idea what the hell was happening. At first, nobody knew. And players began debating whether or not what was happening was a glitch, or perhaps some sort of world event orchestrated by Blizzard. Events in online games nowadays are extremely commonplace, but back in 2005, something on this scale would have been unheard of. 
players were split. There was a lot of players criticizing Blizzard, but then there was also people praising them. And the thing that I find the most fascinating isn't so much the plague itself and how it started, but rather the player's response to it, how they adapted and how they survived in the game amidst the virtual outbreak. Players generally fled from heavily populated areas. Blizzard had even requested a quarantine asking players to stay out of areas known to be infected. But just like in real life, there were many who didn't take it seriously. Sorry if this is hitting too close to home. The game's characters are ignoring quarantine warnings, the virus is multiplying dramatically, and panic has set in. For a lot of players, it was exciting, and they needed to go and check out the chaos for themselves. It's kind of understandable in a way. So many people play the game worldwide that scientists say it's a model for what could happen if a real epidemic swept the globe. On top of that, a number of healers volunteered their services to assist low-level players stuck in the infected areas. The first responders. Because not everyone knew what was going on. This is back in 2005, where it wasn't commonplace to hop on Twitter or Reddit every 20 minutes to check the latest happenings. Imagine jumping on after being away for a few days, loading up into Iron Forge, and it's completely gone to shit. A computer game is providing us with a remarkable virtual view of what could happen if a real epidemic erupted across the globe. Roadblocks were set up around common routes in and out of infected areas. The reason why this event was so useful for study and it was so analyzed, because despite taking place in a virtual world, it was inhabited by real people, more or less. And their behavior was very human and oddly relatable today. To quote the website Gamma Sutra, it mirrored real-world epidemics in numerous ways. It originated in a remote, uninhabited region and was carried by travelers to urban centers. Hosts were both human and animal, such as with avian flu. It was spread by close spatial contact, and there were asymptomatic individuals, in this case, invulnerable NPCs. After several emergency patches, some which required hard resets on the server, the Corrupted Blood incident came to an end and would fully be patched out by October 8th, 2005, where pets were no longer able to be affected by corrupted blood. And while this all may ultimately seem inconsequential, the event was an important one for the video game industry and the nature of always online games. The corrupted blood incident in many ways can be seen as one of the first large-scale world events in a video game, which Blizzard themselves even mimicked three years later in 2008 in the lead-up to the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. This time, though, it was intentional. And even more surprising, the event was important in terms of science and epidemiology. It was the subject of many, many studies, and it has once again found itself as a topic of interest due to the state of the world and the ongoing pandemic. It's almost eerie how many of these details truly hit close to home. I'm logged on to an MMORPG with people from all over the world and getting XP with my party using TeamSpeak. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Deep Cuts. As always, please let me know what you thought about it, hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and then check out some of the other stories that we've covered on this channel using the Deep Cuts playlist. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Peace.